let's get into Halo Wars 2. Yeah. So all three of us are big <laughs> Halo fans, mm -hmm. shooter fans in general. Um, been working, Rob, you and I have been working together for like a year and a half, and we probably talk about Halo maybe once a week sure. in some respect. Yeah. Uh, and then Callie, I know you like a lot of shooters. and I yeah. love Halo so much. Yes. Okay, so you're in good company. Yes. Um, You've been playing Halo Wars 2. Right. We can't completely talk about everything. We can't talk too much about story. Um, the review will be up tomorrow, so look out for that on GameSpot.com, a cool website that you may have heard of mm. before. Um, but I do want to touch on um, some of the gameplay stuff for Halo fans. I see a lot of, um, not parallels, but kind of where it takes its inspiration from mm -hmm. different Halo missions. Yeah. Um, so like there's just stuff that feels like the Warthog run, you know, mm, and like sure. uh, I'm I've been enjoying that a lot. Um, the Halo nods and being like, oh, yeah, this is like so badass. Like I get those flashbacks when I first played Combat Evolves and I was like, this is the best game. Yeah. Um, and then the RTS elements uh, almost take a back seat for me, uh, which is it, I guess it depends what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But the I was able to just kind of breeze through a lot of things just like highlighting all of my units and being like all right go over there do this yeah speaking as someone who loves halo and rts i played about half of the campaign of halo wars 2 and i completely agree with you that it takes a lot of nods from not just like halo campaign but like shooters and i think you know the question is always is this an rts game for halo fans or a halo game for rts fans and i think it's the former it is absolutely the an former rts game for halo fans yeah. because there are a lot of things, even the new uh, multiplayer modes, like Blitz and Domination, yeah. are very much kind of these things you're used to in shooters. They're these right. zone control, very fast-paced, jump in, jump out modes that RTS fans might not traditionally be used to. They work well in the RTS structure and kind of change up how you play, Yeah, but they are very accessible for someone. I could immediately look at uh, Domination and be like, oh, I've played a lot of Halo 3 in my time. Mm -hmm. I kind of get how this works. I'm going to send these units to here, capture it, exactly. defend it a little bit, move to the next one, get resources. Um, but like you said, the Warthog run from the end of Halo 1 and 3 is like the first mission in this game. It's not really a spoiler. It's just it's showing you how oh. to move around units, but it's also like... I, oh. I love that it functions as a tutorial, okay. essentially. If you, was, if you, I was trying to imagine it like in an RTS yeah. session. You, you have a yeah, single Warthog. Okay. If you skip the tutorial, which don't because you get an achievement for it if you care about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Um yeah, it's it's just like here's how you move around the map, but it's it reminded me so much of the the warthog run, and yeah, you're just controlling a single warthog through an environment, um, and just following kind of waypoints. Um, the the one thing like a big gripe I have is you can't zoom out very far, and I just yeah. I always felt like I couldn't get a good enough view of the battlefield, yes. especially later mm. on. Um, but you know, the, the other perspective oh, almost well. feels more like an isometric game rather than a. I mean, it's it is isometric in a lot of spots. It feels more like a dungeon crawler sometimes when you're looking at it than an RTS that you could zoom out with. Yeah, and like zooming in, I never zoomed in. I stayed almost at, it's funny that he's zooming in on this. <laughs> um, I almost always was fully zoomed out yeah. playing. Uh, I just didn't need to be zoomed in unless you wanted to like see something up close. I love grunts, so I saw a grunt once and I was like, oh, it's my, my best friend. Just their garbled stuff. I love them so, so much. So that right there looked like a... Uh uh, oh God, the name of the move in Halo is um, Ground Pound. Yes, yeah. There are like the Spartans again. The Spartans, the the heroes. Of, a lot of RTS have these abilities, but Spartans can kind of do stuff like that. You know, they have the Spartan laser. Obviously, you'll recognize the weapons if you played a lot of Halo. There are also right. the mission structure feels very influenced by like a Halo campaign. Like uh, from it, the time I played, there's a boss fight. It in an RTS. Absolutely. I mean, we shouldn't get too too into it, yeah. but um, it's. Absolutely, like if like a Halo game will go from like guns blazing to you got to be super careful and, yeah. and watch yourself. Um, and that, this felt a lot like that. That's so funny. I, you know, hearing you talk about it, uh, it's like okay, yeah, I, mean, I could see Halo influences, but this map is totally uh, combat evolved. The second map when you land, Halo, um, yeah. Halo, yeah, the first yeah. one. That's totally uh, it. Where you get to kind of explore. And there's like, there are other missions that just even the name it's taken from the first Halo. Yep. Um, like a beachhead, and then you kind of rush up it. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. There's skulls. Okay. Yeah. You can get skulls. skulls. Yeah, if you do secondary objective, you get skulls. All right. it, this is very much the question I wanted to ask, because um, we can set up the premise, right, of the story pretty quickly. No. We can't? We can't. There's like a thing at the very beginning that, like, 
it, yeah, we can't really talk about that. Oh, okay. The the premise there is part of the premise is that um uh there is a rogue brute faction called the Banished, um, mm-hmm. and that's who you're up against here. But rather public than about when this takes place. The Covenant, right? yes. After five. Yeah, so it's it's uh twenty eight years after Halo Wars one, I believe. It's either yes. twenty eight or twenty yeah, twenty eight. Um so we we can know that. Yes. But um this is this is the where it gets yeah tricky because I don't want to spoil anything, but it is even the story itself kind of bookends things that happen in the Halo storyline. Mm-hmm. And I think, like I said, is Halo Wars two essential for a Halo fan? And essential is a strong word, but I think if you are a Halo fan and you have some passing interest in RTS and fleshing out the story, I think it's worth your time. Um, it is a bare boned RTS. I don't like StarCraft fans or Warcraft three fans might not love this uh but it does flesh out the story in a great way and i think it actually like i said is accessible if you just have played the halo shooters for a while like rob i could see you getting into this yeah i don't think you play many rts games right it's super accessible i will say i do like rts's i mean i like like red alert 2 yeah that's Uh, one of my favorite games uh, ever you've starcraft warcraft uh 2 like definitely into it um yeah i honestly was not inclined to play this but just I guess the nostalgia factor would maybe pull me in more than I thought. When you were talking about, it, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I want to, you, you want to enjoy the game at yeah. the end of the day, right? And but there's still something about Halo that can still lure me in. There's always going to be something at Halo, even the cinematics, uh, which I won't say the subject of them, but um, even them, I'm like watching them and being like, I just fucking love Halo so yeah. much. Yeah. It's definitely so, a lot of fan service. Uh, Blur yeah. Studios, I believe, did the cutscenes, right? They did the Halo 2 uh, anniversary cutscenes. Mm, yeah, yes. I, yes the, I mo- so. Probably the most gorgeous cutscenes ever. I, Outside of like Blizzard games, sure. these are the best looking cutscenes ever. They look great, yeah. And so I was just, it felt like very um, directed at me as a Halo fan in mm-hmm. general. Um, and I think, you know, it's a very simple interface for an RTS. It's kind of like a two button attack system. Um, same with the first one. Um, so in that sense, it's very accessible. Yeah. I did find myself um, like trying to mash X, which is like the attack button, yeah. just because I was so used to having, like I'm like, oh, attack, shoot now. And that's obviously not how it works. And so I had to untrain my brain. Uh, out of that. Have you been using control groups at all with like, I think you can map them to D pads so you can just group like the Hellbringers together and then the Marines together in a different group. Yeah. I wish it were more specific. Like I wish I could, uh, assign like a custom group like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to have, you know, two warthogs, that's some Hellbringers. That's type of stuff. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Cyclops and, um, I, it's been working well on PC. I've played, uh, on PC. I haven't been playing on Xbox just to clarify. It does work well on PC. You can have like a, a warthog, a Hellbringer, a Spartan, but yeah, on controllers, right? You have to double yeah. tap a unit and then map like all, every Marine on screen to one group or something. Yeah, it's it's compl- I mean, honestly, I haven't really had to bother with that much. Yeah. It's not. I'm I'm playing on uh, normal for the purposes of the review, so if, when I play it through on a higher difficulty, that's probably not going to be the case. But for you know, just for anyone who's playing on the average difficulty, I don't think that's going to be even really necessary. Yeah. Um, I was basically like just paint highlighting. Uh, units and sending them to where I needed them and it was almost there, there were times where I, I finished a mission like I won the mission and I was like oh it's over already okay I yeah. did it oops so that was my impression from playing about half the campaign on PC is that when I actually tried to be really tactical and RTS minded and have the Hellbringers you know hit this garrison the Spartan Jerome and the Marines hit this building while my Warthogs shoot at this it didn't feel like that was completely necessary like it might be like uh you know, dividing up attacks, attack groups when you're going for a base in, you know, like Red Alert or StarCraft or Warcraft. It felt like I was trying to do too much for an RTS that didn't want me to think that much. And that comes into your um, your comment about being accessible. It feels like uh, if I invade a base with an army, yeah, it helps to kind of divide up what they're doing. But after a while, it just kind of devolves into everybody shoot this thing and then all of you shoot this thing. And then once that's done, everybody shoot at this thing, throw grenades. Yeah, I, there were there were some instances where that's not the case. But yeah, <laughs> if the, if there's more like I'm going to as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go play more. So uh, if there's more customization, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. Haven't even had to bother looking for it yet. Okay. So. So in general, what's your take? If you're a Halo fan, should you play this? I mean, I'm sure people will go on YouTube and just watch all the cutscenes to get the story. But yeah, I mean, yeah, if you like really don't want to play an RTS, then yeah. sure, 
read the plot synopsis, I guess. But like, <laughs> I can't force you to play it. But yeah. I would say it's definitely an RTS for Halo fans. Like you said, not a Halo game for RTS, right. game, RTS fans. Um, but if you would like more detailed information, you can check out my review tomorrow. Yes. GameSpot also has a few v- feature videos up. Uh, Nick Margarita did some stuff on Halo Wars 2. He went up to 343 Studios recently, did a couple interviews, put up a few feature videos. Oh, speaking of Nick Margarita, he wants to talk about us to talk about the Blitz mode. You want to? I mean, we can... I We were kind of running. <laughs> sure, <laughs> Not really. we can talk about Blitz mode. Um, so Blitz, correct me if I'm wrong, is the card, the deck building yes. mode. So you can, uh, in campaign, if you rank up I, maybe it carries over into skirmish, but you have these decks, you, these cards, kind of like any deck building game, and you get to pick, uh, start forming your deck and bring it into blitz mode, and you play these decks at the same time. So someone like Nick Margarita was saying he'll bring a bunch of cheaper cards, like uh, ODSTs would be eighty, Marines would be sixty or something. He'd bring a bunch of those, and then two really strong cards like uh, a Mac Blast or a Scorpion Tank, and then bring those in. It kind of just affects what you are bringing into the fight. Yeah, it's like an RTS twist on Blitz, which I think is an interesting concept, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool, and then you can rank up and unlock new cards in campaign, yeah. kind it's, of a cross cross play thing between campaign and multiplayer. But yeah, like I said, it's they're kind of bringing a few different genres. Now they have deck building in this. I think of that what you will. I like the bridging between campaign and multiplayer because that's something that some games just drop completely. And yeah. So I always appreciate an effort put there. I will say. Yeah. Um, but you know. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, Kelly, your review will be up soonish. Very soon. This week. I got to go right. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you get back to it after the show. Uh, that'll be up. And then, like I said, we have video features up on GameSpot. You can go check those out. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, stay tuned to GameSpot for the rest of the week for more Halo Wars 2 coverage and for the review and to see our final thoughts. I like it. I'm having fun with it so far. I think, yeah. Rob, I think you should try it out maybe as a Halo fan. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I check will. Check it out. I, I just might. <laughs>